I'm going to cut a promo. Cut a promo. And you want to throw it in the beginning, though? I'll, I, I'll put it two or three places, maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's been a little bit of a while, but we have our launch. We're coming out with a brand new physical education launch by a good company, Third Street Barbell. A um, bunch of cool stuff, a couple tops, a couple bottoms, some slides, some socks, and it is live this Sunday for you listeners only. So you guys get priority access. 3sb.co check it out stag something while it's there because it might not be there very very long um and appreciate you guys listening and hopefully that um there's something you can dig on something you like and follow third street barbell on instagram if you want to see some of the previews and things to come appreciate you guys very much Sorry, I'm sitting on a whole lot of gossip right now, and I'm not going to say it on the show, swear to God, yeah. but the temptation is just wild. I will say that I'm going to ask you a question. Which which is worse, just evil or or stupid and evil? Um, I'd probably say smart and evil would be the worst, right? Let's say like we even talked about the sociopath, psychopath deal. Like sociopaths who at least can like understand there's – one, there's fewer of them, and two, they stick out. Yeah, yeah. The – malicious or malignant narcissist psychopath is probably scarier right maybe so yeah like Look, stupid ones stupid ones limit their own damage by being stupid their damage would be greater if they were smart and they typically damage themselves more than they damage other people yeah they'd be not, dirty maybe not every every time but yeah but cr- there's dirty paths yeah. and like mess ups they can't keep from from damaging themselves right or their plans just aren't as grandiose whereas if you're stupid smart yeah you could i mean theoretically you could be enough of a con that you could you know yeah i guess it all depends on how stupid as well right yeah because if you're really stupid then you can't get shit done yeah yeah. but most people aren't that stupid i would say that the um the like stupid criminals are epitomized by uh, characters in um coen brothers movies yeah yeah Big Lebowski, yeah, Raising yeah. Arizona. Yeah, yeah, they're almost like they're obviously dumb too. But then, like uh, how those are built, they're like built with like dumb luck. Yeah, how they get by. Right. And I don't. Maybe that. I mean, that kind of works in real life sometimes. Yeah. 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 So, so much is just luck. I mean, and how many people are sociopaths or fucking psychos or pieces of shit that just don't cause damage because they don't have that opportunity or luck? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like how many work for the state? Oh yeah, and yeah. so they can't do anything. They can't do anything major. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and and you know the promises that these people make, it's really kind of a you know buyer beware caveat emptor situation with you, when you're buying what you've been promised. It's like wh- whether or not it's up to you to figure out whether or not you can trust this person. Yeah, I mean that's like the essence of life as an adult. Yeah. Yeah, I know it is. And the the problem is that a lot of us, no matter how cynical we are, we want to believe that people are good. We want to believe yeah. that they will, um, if if they are acting in their own interest, they also are magnanimous to humanity enough to right. also not act to your detriment, at least. That's right? uh, like the biggest uh, pill I, I still can't swallow as an adult is like good good things happen to good people. You're taught that. Yeah, yeah. And Except it's just not. It doesn't. It doesn't yeah. really work that no, way. No, no, no. no. Good, that's, good is relative. Yeah. So I guess you could sleep at night in your morals and you're, you, know, you stay yeah. sane, but chances are you're going to have to step on people. Yeah, we, were, we, we could go down a rabbit hole about religion in that regard yeah. for sure. I don't know that we really want to go down that rabbit hole because no. we're going to have to go down the rabbit hole of medicine with this, with this uh, documentary. But yeah, moral lines and monsters. We talked off air on monsters <clears throat> so we're talking about al- uh, athlete a oh we haven't started streaming yet we recorded though it's yeah, we're reco- we're yeah yeah audio is recording um and i think even previous to this movie you and i were talking about i uh <laughs> i went on a bike ride yesterday and i like think in my head like 
I don't filter myself here, but I'm like, is it dumb to say? <laughs> you know, like, does this one stay off air? And uh, <laughs> well, I just I totally started off this whole thing, yeah, uh, saying that there's a bunch of shit I'm holding on to that I'm not talking about talking about on the show. But I uh, said it to a friend, and they didn't look at me like I'm an idiot or insane. So okay. I was like, all right, and I could probably share it to the world. I mean, this is a friend, so they are more accepting of me than. Yeah, maybe these listeners, but so God knows. So um, it's easy and hard, and I know that makes no sense to see humanity in people that make big mistakes publicly. Now, uh, I struggle with this. I think everyone struggles with this. Sometimes um, you'll see something and uh, mental health drug addiction Mm -hmm. and he'll be like what a scumbag throw him the fuck away like Mm -hmm. they're a detriment to society and us right like how could you like how are you so undisciplined you get hooked on pills and whatever and then your best friend your sister your cousin gets on pills Mm -hmm. and you or you go through some mental health stuff or you go through a back injury where you're on some pills and you're like what they're just you really understand like Mm -hmm. oh yeah like my back really hurt and Mm -hmm. i'm taking these pills for my back and then i felt really good and then I just continue to take these pills because I felt good, right? Yeah, like right. it becomes much more human. Um, and then the more extreme the case, you know, the more public the case. If it becomes political, or it's someone you like that's a celebrity, mm-hmm. or, or someone you don't like that's a celebrity, mm-hmm. it's easy to justify one way or the other, right? And all these things are to scale, right? Like crime, although the law is kind of black and white, like morality isn't as black and white to me. Uh-huh. It's I don't more think the laws all that black and white a lot of the uh, time either, but that's another thing. I'll I, the the laws black and white in the sense that like they they have some nuances in like murder, but you know, in like sentence to murder, uh-huh. but like murder's murder, and they just kind of make it dark. Yeah, yeah, they just make it bad. But what I said to Jim that I was debating of not <laughs> sharing here is that I uh, do I'm my brain works very extreme, so sometimes I think people are the worst and should be locked up for the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I see such humanity in things or humor uh-huh. Uh-huh. or whatever. And I told Jim about like murder. I was like, mur- like, like I've never killed a human. Uh, I've never killed anything. You know, I'm not like a hunter. I killed a giant cockroach the other day. Yeah. I've killed a bug. Uh, <laughs> even that I don't like to do. I don't like bugs, but like I can see the humanity in some of that situationally. If my worst day ever, and people talk about worst day. I'm not talking about like, oh, I had to pay taxes today and I failed my math test. Like, right, right. The worst shit lines up for six hours straight. Just worst, mm-hmm. right? And I'm in the worst headspace and I'm in the, and I'm driving my car and I get in a accident and some dude jumps on my hood. I'm probably running him over and killing him. <laughs> you know, or at least I can understand yeah, how yeah, someone I- runs his ass over and kills him. Yeah. They might in the moment not have meant that it to be that bad, but they do need to lash it's out human. in some way. It's a yeah, human yeah. thing. Yeah. It's a human thing. I, I, you, some some aren't, right? Like fucking Dexter or something, you chopping people up and wrapping yeah, them in yeah, bags. Yeah. There's Right, that's where this the, yeah. the murder moral line is different than the law moral line. But I understand some of that. Um, and I'm biased. And I was, even this part is the even more iffy part that I wasn't going to share. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, like the Michael Jackson documentary. Mm-hmm. So the um, Michael Jackson documentary was on Amazon. Um, I, I've been a, mic- a fan of Michael Jackson's music for a very long time as artistry. Um, and my bias in that felt weird. Um, obviously, weird things are going on. No one really knows. Uh, and then my bias was actually justified because Amazon ripped down the documentary because of the inconsistencies within the story of it, mm-hmm. within the witnesses or the, the, the victims. Mm-hmm. So, being biased, it obviously feeds to my side. I've watched the R. Kelly um, documentary, which actually is new news. I think he just went to court yesterday, Mm. started a new trial. And I actually liked R. Kelly's music a lot, too, growing up. I listened to a lot of his music, not knowing any of this, obviously. but um, And I see that, and I see... uh, I don't see humanity i see how dark and I, that this guy's a monster this mm-hmm. guy is just pure selfish sexual predator um and this gets really dark when you start talking about kids it gets really dark when you start talking about women it gets really dark when you start talking about any sexual assault rape etc that especially when it goes on for a long time i guess the humanity for me starts to live in the situation and the frequency mm-hmm. my worst day ever i run over one guy <laughs> 
I'm not running people over for fun video game every single day. I haven't ran over 30 people. Yeah, yeah. Right? So the humanity lies in the situation and the context. So you haven't been living Grand Theft Auto is what you're saying? But, like, that's what people think, you know? And, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not just fucking busting heads. <laughs> where, like, the frequency becomes more, m- less human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Although then I argue like, well, you get desensitized, you could easily get addicted to whatever. Like See, it's just that, so fucking weird. Th- 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 there's a mythology around that that I don't know whether it's true, but but they, you know, in fiction they always say. That, well, I mean, I guess maybe World War II is the same way. And the, on the Nazi side, it's like yeah. it's the the first few were hard, and then after that it gets easy. And I don't know that that's I don't know I don't, I don't know, know the either. truth of that. Yeah, I don't know either with killing or sexual assault, obviously, or anything because I, I've just never been that extreme. But on a smaller note, I have heard firsthand instances from doctors, surgeons. EMTs, firefighters, cops that are friends that they do get desensitized because you're seeing some wild shit every single day or every week. And so, yeah, like imagine if you went through the trauma of seeing your first dead body every week when you saw it every week, like you're, you would die. Yeah. You, like you, you, you know what I mean? Like the human soul can't take that. So your body, your brain protects you. From yeah, caring. Uh, by compartmentalizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm not Which, saying it's healthy. I'm not saying anything, but you do get desensitized. Yeah, where uh, I mean, you raised an interesting point. Um, I think that I'm dark, Jim. This documentary <laughs> is not new thoughts in my brain. If I've uh, thought of all this, if um, if you're a helping person, if you're a helper, yeah. and you're and you're in a situation that is just like overwhelmingly awful, yeah. right? Uh, the compartmentalization allows you to do what needs to be done yeah. from a positive perspective, even though you will pay the bill later because right. you always pay the bill later. That's why like firefighting or EMT has always been my plan B because I think I'm that guy. You think you can compartmentalize no, long enough so. to get through situations? Yeah, yeah I think you're, so. Yeah, I mean, in adrenaline, like I'm an adrenaline junkie, not that I need to jump out of a plane, but when shit's hitting the fan, like I can be calm. Yeah. Uh, you know, example of this actually, that we just passed the... Seven year anniversary of my boy Will, uh, and that that incident in in Afghanistan with the um, uh, green on blue violence. Yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, he uh, like I knew when 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 he was out of contact on that day, and we knew that there had been an incident. I was a hundred percent sure that he was in the middle of it. And I was 100% sure that he was doing some fucking heroic thing because I know yeah, that's based on his personality and kind of everything he's been through in his life that he can he can compartmentalize and keep going forward. I also know that there is a you know a price to pay after that. Yeah. Like the, he and his uh, podcast partner just did a, uh, an episode a couple of weeks ago on, on PTSD and talked about their own PTSD. They do a movie podcast, but they both have struggled with PTSD. So it was interesting to hear them talk about Yeah. Like how they experience it, but I, I knew, I knew that he could get through that situation and do whatever needed to be done, and and just deal with the consequences later, the emotional yeah. consequences later. Um, I think in this instance, and we're talking again about Athlete A, which is the um, documentary about USA Gymnastics and uh, Larry Nasser. There's sort of no shortage of bad guys in this, right? So, so that's where like the desensitized becomes different because there's like one monster in this, and, and supported by other monsters though. So, yeah, I'll get to my thoughts on that. I I think yes, uh, supported by I think there's one monster. This might take one monster supported by other shit, but I don't know if the other ones are like monsters. I think I would make the the point that they're monsters. Larry Nasser was the team doctor for women's uh, USA women's gym, gymnastics since like for the nineties, like twenty years. Yeah, it sounds more like thirty years. Cause, yeah, cause long, he, a long, long yeah. time. And he, and he before that he was um, uh, he was he did it as a student. Yeah, was yeah, like an intern, as, but he is like a physician. Like he's right. a fucking doc. And yeah, and he was doing it for University of Michigan. I think like Michigan State, but yeah. Michigan State. Okay. Yeah, so Michigan main- State uh, uh, for students, athletes, and public, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, he j- just to, to break it down without getting yeah. too gross, he was... Um, it's not that he was violently raping anyone from, from what we can tell. What it was yeah. was it was under the guise of medical treatment, 
he was sexually abusing them. I, I don't know the actual definition of rape, but it was it's like how they exp- cuz it gets explicit in the movie. Uh, uh it sounds like rape. Yeah. But well, you're right. It wasn't it wasn't in a dark alley. No. It was like a b- blue c- blue c- or white collar rape. <laughs> That's an interesting point. It was it, white collar rape. It it was yeah, it was it like was it's just as gross. It's just not as like you said like it maybe not violent. Yeah. But it's j- just as like at least in my eyes like g- gross. Because it's manipulative. Going back to the sociopath versus psychopath type mm-hmm. deal, and this is all so dark. Like it feels weird talking about this publicly, <laughs> but I do think conversations have to happen for like growth to happen. Yeah, a sociopath, yeah, knocks your head off and, and rapes you in an alley, mm-hmm. and a psychopath does stuff like this. I think you could be right. And you know what I mean? It, it's clearly though there is compartmentalization about it because. We see in the course of the film, there's actually a lot of footage of the guy from um, instructional videos he did and tons, tons of stuff. stuff. Well, and there's interview shit. And, there's a, yeah, a, there's tons there's of footage. There's also court stuff toward the end. Which is interesting because a lot of documentaries like this, especially when I feel like they're high profile, which USA Gymnast has fucking so popular over the last 30 years. Yeah. Uh, and the story's big, and 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 the faces they show in the documentary. Although none of the really big names talk in it, um, no. the Ali Reismans, the the Biles, Simone whatever. Biles, but they're yeah. involved, yeah, yeah, and they're in the video. Michaela Moroni. So they obviously got some kind of permission ish to have their face uh, or something. But, uh, maybe, in, maybe yeah, maybe, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, point is like high profile shits happening, right? Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but they, it's insane to me how much footage they have of him i guess yeah where other murder stuff or other you don't have any footage of them talking but he, and he was like a known guy he was yeah. a known guy before the scandal yeah and you would think that those would be the people who would know to keep their shit on the down low if they're going to do something terrible when i think he tried or 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 keep yourself on the down low which is but a lot of the ego around that makes it impossible i think the biggest thing for me to take away from this entire thing is that He's a monster that found the perfect storm. Okay. So they talk about the 60s and 70s, how I think of the 60s, they say like a 37-year-old won gymnastics gold. Yeah, there was a lot of, it was a lot of, of women, but you know, who, <coughs> bless you, post-puberty for sure. Well, and, and, and like, <laughs> like the move they show, uh, they're uh-huh. like, 37 year old whatever Russian or uh-huh. American I think it was American won gold and they show her do like one flip over the horse yeah and I'm like I could do that <laughs> you know what I mean you're <laughs> like in a like, practice you were like now you see what they do and you're like I don't even know what I saw like yeah. they're moving like a video game yeah, like yeah. it's insane so like obviously the sports progressed in 40 years beyond what other sports have progressed correct yeah. and 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 like how she's built yeah, she's built like a very normal mom that's mm-hmm. thirty seven mm-hmm. compared to now that's like jacked little fourteen year old tanks. Yeah, which actually, uh, before we even watch this, I was watching the Olympics a little bit this year, and I know that like Biles is like twenty one or twenty two or something. Twenty four. And then there's another blonde chick on our team that's twenty four. Yeah, and, and even some of the dudes were like twenty five. Yeah, twenty seven. Everybody looked a little bit older. This and time I saw there. that, and I was like, "Oh, that's weird." So my first first take before we go to, the, I'll spill the perfect storm is that um, I was confused or wanting more of an answer from more experts when they said that the vibe of gymnasts or the trend of gymnasts from sixties to seventies turned to kids. They said, uh, and I don't know who was narrating at the time, but someone said it seemed that we thought smaller bodies could do more things. Yeah, it's possible. I don't remember who said that. Yeah, but, yeah, but they possible. didn't say, like, we for sure know that the flexibility of a 14-year-old and the size of 14-year-old's strength was better for gymnastics. Like, they didn't say something like that. And I was kind of waiting for that, uh-huh. which made it seem more of, like, a cultural trend, at least in the depict. because I don't know shit about gymnastics. <laughs> they made it seem like a cultural trend in the movie, and they started to visually show you russians and americans looking 12 looking 12 but being like 16 all competing at the high level in the 70s and 80s uh, I, the, what they presented as kind of the turning point and i don't know if uh, if it is the thing that actually did it or and it was trend but it was trending that way yeah. or what but it was nadia komanich right who was young yeah and doing nuts she shit. was amazing amazing right. they like the ABC or NBC or whoever had the the Olympics at that point, they took a particular piece of classical music and put it to her routine and stuff. And it, and it like they sold b- b- zillions of records yeah. 
you know, off of that recording and yeah. other recordings. They call it Nadia's theme. And then it became like the theme of a soap opera for a while. And, you know, that it just really, really got into the into the zeitgeist, yeah. into the mainstream. And uh, I guess it influenced like a lot of little girls who wanted to become sure. Start earlier, and they if they started earlier, then then some of them got ready earlier. Yeah, you know, to the, to compete even within the adult like thirty seven year old to Nadia like ten years or so within ten years it seems. Yeah, so they tell again. I'm not a gy- gymnast historian. The moves they're doing again from a layman's eyes of mine, like the one lady literally does one flip off the horse, yeah. and then Nadia's belly flopping triple fucking axling on this pole. And yeah. you're like, what the fuck? You yeah. know, like evolved quick. And so obviously, and obviously it makes sense. Like if you're strong enough at a smaller size, you can be a little bit more agile in the air. Like yeah. I get that, but just the movie made it feel like a cultural weird change. And they didn't quite push the sexual thing, but they kind of started to show faces. And they said these mm. girls started to look this way. They didn't say, they didn't like talk about it from a sport aspect. And I think maybe they were building that into the movie. Mm-hmm. They talked about it from like a cultural visual aspect Mm -hmm. and in a way uh it starts becoming like like the you know toddler beauty pageants kind of thing right you know i mean so that's where my perfect storm comes right so we get into the 70s 80s 90s or modern day gymnastics and it's a kid's sport Uh you're starting at four and you're competing at a high level at 10 and then you're competing at the elite level in your teens yeah puberty ish olympic training camps aren't that weird i think to people that don't understand any olympics in this movie it seems weird they go to a camp in the middle of nowhere no cell phones just adults and 14 year olds Mm -hmm. for a month or 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 once a month that seems weird but to an elite elite athlete that's not that weird that's semi-normal they all of them kind of have something not all of them no but but a lot lot of them do a lot of the ones with any kind of funding yeah even even not like the random winter bobsled like people even weightlifting kind of does it and they don't have a lot of funding like it kind of just happens that that makes sense to have a training camp to kind of train as a team although it's an individual sport to push each other all under the guy the the guidance of of the head coach yeah i know the the uh, u.s olympic uh weightlifting team went to hawaii before the olympics right and they did all their you know all the all the last minute training and all that stuff and then they flew into right to uh japan right so semi-normal the kid thing started to become normal because that's the strength and age that they're better at this sport yeah and then there's not a sport that i can think of um i guess the male counterpart even though male gymnastics is the same the male counterpart which would be interesting if they dug into that at all yeah who knows? right but um the male counterpart would maybe be wrestling to me uh-huh. In terms of sports that train for insane amount of hours. And so that is the perfect storm for needing a doctor 24-7 to fix your shit. Mm-hmm. Right? You're young. You're like gymnasts train three times, four times a day year round because their sport's not really seasonal in terms of like weather or whatever. They're going fucking nuts. Of course their hips hurt. It's all like isometric strength-based impact shit. Mm-hmm. And that doctor probably does fix something, although even bullshit I saw, like he's throwing kinesio tape everywhere and like everyone knows, not everyone, sorry for those out there. You should know kinesio tape doesn't do really anything. Really anything. Uh, it, it's a cueing device at yeah, the very yeah. best. But. So point is like, it's kind of like a perfect storm for this monster to succeed. Right. Um, despite it, me totally understanding as like a parent or 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 even someone involved with the organization that isn't a monster right to think normal things are happening yeah right cuz they talk about like oh he has a private um room well, like he's a doctor yeah is he just going to be like doing it in the middle of nowhere like that doesn't seem normal either yeah there is um like even junior college basketball we had trainers we didn't really have uh doctors on staff no. But, like, certified trainers, and I'm not talking about, like, teach you how to do push-ups trainers, like, tape your ankle trainers, like, athletic trainers. And we had, like, a room. Like, it wasn't tiny, but it was, like, two massage tables that you'd Mm -hmm. lay on or sit on while they iced you or wrapped your knees. You know, like, you went back to the room. That stuff's normal in sports. Um, But what we've noticed with humanity, going back to are people good or you want them to be good or not... (laughs) Is that monsters find these things? The Boy Scouts, the church, the gymnastics, perfect storm. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and this monster found his yeah dwelling. Yeah, <laughs> seemingly uh, there is um, there's a podcast from the BBC called Where Is George Gibney, which is about swimming in Ireland, and it's essentially the same kind of story except that it wasn't. The guy wasn't a doctor, and he wasn't a trainer. He was the coach, uh. and and literally he was grooming them to the to be able to molest them. Yeah, and, and he was indiscriminate about it. It was boys, it was girls, it was whatever. Yeah, and it was one of those like people. Some people knew, but they couldn't figure out how to take him down, and some people. It was such a horrific experience for them. They couldn't talk about it. Sure, as which is similar to this. Similar yeah. to this, yeah. People who, who held on to these things for decades told very few people, as few people as they could, because it was embarrassing. Yeah. And they felt responsible even though they weren't. Well, and even when you're that young, uh, he brought up a really good point at the end. I forgot the guy's name that kind of started narrating at the end, and it kind of like popped in my head. Like, obviously, I've known my whole life, but I'm a dude. I'm, I'm a 5'8", I'm a kind of thick dude. I can't relate to rape traumas. Uh-huh. I can understand. like You know what I mean? But you can't like viscerally feel it the same. Same way, I'm sure, like even as a dad, you can't viscerally feel like pregnancy. You understand it. You went through the process with your wife and you raised kids. But it's just so different to be a dude. Mm-hmm. Not that dudes don't deal with sexual assault or rape, but obviously the percentage is yeah, way less. Yeah, there's a lot of it in the military. Yeah, but it's just way less, right? And so this guy at the end said like these kids have never experienced like love or physical compassion and how he started to click like that in my head and he's like their first experience of that is with this fucking weird doctor yeah. like love i'm 33 fucking years old <laughs> and we talked about love and how that word's already weird for me but yeah. like love and intimacy and relationships are so complicated and i'm fucked up but i'm pretty normal mm-hmm. you know i don't have i have traumas not in that area yeah, yeah. that stuff is really hard that's a hard human thing to go through with a good past. Mm-hmm. Now you're taking 14 to 18, tw- even if they're 24, it doesn't really fucking matter the age, but let alone their first experience with a man being something maybe, like obviously it's traumatizing and maybe, again, it wasn't like violence, so maybe it wasn't like scary, they don't know what's going on, but it's definitely just making shit way more fucked up emotionally, physically, mentally. Mm-hmm. And and that's not going away. No, like that's that. Not that. I, again, I didn't understand rape and it's 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 effect. But like how that guy kind of phrased it, kind of hit me. Like yeah, like this is like beyond fucked up. Like it's fucked, but it's like beyond fucked up. It, it, it yeah, it created a, a permanent trauma. Yeah, that, that they're gonna have to deal with forever, or maybe because I'm getting older and I understand how hard relationships <laughs> are, and like humans are, and like yeah, yeah. you know, like all that is so hard without bringing the back kind of baggage. To without it, yeah. even bring, not even baggage. Like that's fucking <laughs> FedEx largest warehouse. Yeah, like that's yeah, like yeah. the most fucked up shit. And so like to how you fucked up it is. Yeah, it's such a monster move. And again, like the R. Kelly story is very very similar. And then just this fucking idiot in the interrogation room like how he's talking and I'm not a doctor but she's like is there any reason and excuse my crudeness here because I don't know what words they say but they basically say like is there any reason your finger should be in someone's butt yeah. and he's like well, yeah well you know hips and you know tail co- bones yeah. coxic he's like yeah. oh yeah if you're working on the coxic because like there isn't a what a, are you doing back if you break not a your treatment well, if you if you break your tailbone which may be common in gymnastics for all, all i know uh, what's no. your finger up a butt gonna do you fucking monster <laughs> you know like it's just so insane yeah. and obviously uh, i think the narration at that part is the person doing the interrogation and she's like i'm not a doctor he's using these terms but i know he's just full of shit like i can just see yeah because he, he yeah. uses the same ones all the time yeah. and they're they're it, like anytime someone is using you know five dollar words yeah and and stringing them together in a way that is meant to be confusing then you know they're pretty much full of shit that's yeah. that's like kind of full of shit test number one if you can't if it if you can't actually make sense of the vocabulary you're just being fooled yeah um yeah uh, another like obviously huge issue with the whole thing is uh it, they a lot of them, you know, as, as you said, didn't understand what was going on. That was kind of their first experience. They didn't know how how much they were being violated based on yeah. on their kind of 
I call it a fiduciary relationship, you know, with yeah. it, where somebody you, he's you, giving them fucking candy. Yeah, he's he, he's nice. Yeah, he grooms everybody. He grooms them all yeah. to to For, to go along. Yeah, and I think it's the same is true of the of the um, administration of of USA Gymnastics. So that was the perfect storm that I forgot about uh, or forgot to mention is the guy they hire to be the chair, or chief, or CEO, president, president yeah. is a marketer, and yeah. so I guess that's where. I think he's a huge piece of shit. Monster's a little hard for me to say, although he's obviously a piece of shit, and you can call him. I don't give a fuck what you call him. I'm not going to protect this guy by any means. Mm-hmm. But the perfect storm lies in that he's a marketer, and he becomes president of a company that's like athletic and human-based, not really profit-based, mm. but the perfect storm lies in that they start to build celebrities. He starts to land these huge contracts and he's probably making a lot of money and the company's making a lot of money. And so he starts to play a PR role instead of a protector role because he's a marketer and his number one goal is to keep gymnastics looking good publicly. And so when reports come in, he tries to handle them. I I imagine this is me being a hair empathetic. He tries to handle them in, um, a marketing way rather than in a humane way, which is obviously gross when so many reports coming in. But you know what I mean? He hush hushes everything illegally, which I didn't know was a law, but they're talking about the Texas stuff. Oh, yeah, stuff. There's, a, yeah. Th- there's a reporting Makes law sense. for sure. So he's obviously being illegal, morally corrupt and wrong. Yeah. Um, but I guess going back to my vision, I at least understand what he's doing. I don't agree. I think I would like to think I would act differently if I'm in the p- same position, um, but I can at least see the human... In him now, I think he's a piece of shit, and I think that he belongs to be in jail as well. Yeah. Um, but that's also a perfect storm. He's fucking signing McDonald's checks for millions of dollars. You know what I mean? Right. And so he's going to try to keep that check coming in. Right. Well, I see it like this too. Um, there's a nationalism thing around of the Olympics for sure, and you know the the U.S. wanted to beat the Russians and the sort of you know former Soviet bloc countries yeah. in. In gymnastics and and at everything, everything right. we had the highest medal totals in this Olympics too. Russia had to compete as the Russian o- Olympic Committee. Whole another conversation because the 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 country could not compete because of. But some of their athletes could. But some of their athletes could, yeah. Uh, 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 all around the scandal that we talked about in in Icarus yep. earlier this year, um, all this stuff is tied together. Whether or not you know it, there's like I'm, I don't want to say that we're masterminding a whole story. Here yeah, we didn't mean to, but it's stuff, working. But it's working. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was I? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, a thing about the Olympics period is that there's a certain degree of nationalism and or patriotism that comes from them, yeah. seeing your athletes compete or whatever. And I think that the patriotism part of it is. Is I think it's pretty benign. I think the nationalism part of it is not, and that's where you get into by any means necessary stuff, right? Like, like what this guy did. It was it was very by any means necessary. I'm going to keep the face of this this uh, team clean, yeah. and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about how we're um, we're potentially or or you know maybe for sure You're right. He knew. Uh, violating, he knew something. Violating these 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 young athletes, and uh, you know when it comes down to to sexual abuse and stuff, kind of falls into three categories. I think why people don't report. One of them is they don't think that anyone will believe them. Sure. One yeah, of them, or the shame involved. Yeah, and all or that. The, yeah. the shame. Um, one of them is that they blame themselves. Yeah. And um, one of them is that they think that other people will blame them and they do yeah 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 now, or the the negative feedback they go into youtube comments and stuff yeah. in the movie the there isn't i had i didn't see as much of that third part in this but the other ones definitely you know yeah. it's like it, 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 uh, they didn't feel like they b- would be believed and or they're just so confused yeah because they're so young and and they may have been believed yeah but they just you know just covered it up just yeah. flatly covered it up on your nationalism thing i think that's um why playing sports as a kid or growing up is so important um and it's difficult because sports are such a huge deal worldwide and e- and even especially in the u.s for business because it quickly becomes a business even high school now right mm-hmm. the recruitment process and all this there's all these laws and rules but if you have good coaches or even not you basically start to learn sportsmanship 
right? That's one of the main key lessons you learn as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, And in sportsmanship, in my eyes, um, sportsmanship is a respect and integrity and an honor that trumps competitiveness. Yeah. Right? Competitiveness is at the core of any sport, any competition, business even. Mm -hmm. But there's no sportsmanship in business for many. Uh, We've gone into another podcast how we kind of like to carry ourselves with a sportsmanship about our businesses, Mm -hmm. even though it may hinder us from going as far monetarily or by typical success as a business. And that's the same in sports. Your competitiveness has to be number two to your sportsmanship. And this guy is in a sport, this president. Mm -hmm. He's running an athletic organization, but he doesn't have sportsmanship. Oh, that's he doesn't have yeah. integrity. He doesn't have the honor. He doesn't have the respect of the sport or the athletes in mind first above his competitiveness. There's another story that's you know v- being semi-viral on social media about this Olympics where, uh, don't quote me, but <laughs> I think like... Um, I'm going to look it up. Go on. Uh, I think like a Kenyan runner is about to win a marathon. He got lost on the map um, and a Spanish runner or something of the nature is behind him. This guy's clearly going to win and the Spanish runner stops and points him in the right direction. They're within the last couple feet, miles, whatever, and says, hey, you got to go this way. The guy was starting to go the wrong way. The Spanish guy or whoever ends up getting second, although he could have passed this guy who was confused in the run. And everyone's the interviewer himself is ripping the Spanish guy, basically like, you could have won. He's like, well, I wouldn't have really won. This guy won the race. He was just confused. Uh He deserved to win. He beat me. I didn't want that gold. That wasn't mine, so I showed him where to go. Uh Uh-huh. This is not the one I was thinking of. The one I was thinking of was um, point being that that yeah. guy took the, the the sportsmanship, the honor. Yeah. Because again, he could sleep better at night having a silver medal that he earned rather than having a gold that he kind of snuck through by. And that's where comp- and trust me, that dude does not make it to a silver Olympics without being the most competitive asshole on the planet. That guy wants to fucking win. Yeah. He wants to win more than any of us. He's ran more miles than anyone listening right now. Mm-hmm. And he's ran faster, harder, slept better, ate better than any of us listening right now. And he chose the sportsmanship, which the integrity, the honor, and the respect have to be above the competitiveness at the end of the day. Or then it turns into business and we all know top CEOs are all fucking narcissists, uh, psychopaths. <laughs> it's just, it's just what it is yeah. because there is no sportsmanship or honor in business. Yeah. No, uh, that's well, yeah, there's not, there's not none, but there's not much and you can, you have to it's be, it's not a priority. You have to assume that it's not a priority for anybody. Yeah. Now, the, well, the one I'm talking about was the, um, uh, high jump. Oh, the, Oh, I think they like tied. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the, the guy from cutter and the guy from Italy tied. Yeah. And uh, they were supposed to do a jump off. Like the official said, tar- started talking to them about a jump off. And the, the the guy from, I guess the guy from Cutter said, "Can't we just both get the gold medal?" Yeah. And he's like, "Well, actually, we can do that." Yeah, yeah. It's like, "Well, did. let's do that then." Yeah. And then it is weird. They that, were f- they were friends. Yeah, yeah. Too, I'm a little more mood so, point on that one. I'd like a jump off, but I understand. I, I mean, if you're yeah. getting, yeah, yeah. If if you do a jump off, then one of you is getting a silver medal. Yeah. If you if you don't, then you True. both get a gold medal. Yeah. Like there's no there's no yeah. upside to that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess for me, I would just go by the rules. I just don't know that sport enough. Well, the the rules were pretty fungible. They yeah. Just That's do what whatever, I don't like. You know? Cause like you're not gonna do that in basketball. Like oh yeah, we'll just skip overtime. Like no, bitch, we're going to overtime. <laughs> yeah. You know what well, I mean? Well, but that's also a team sport. For sure, for sure. But uh, yeah, I guess I, th- again, it's not my sport. I've never really messed around in that world. To me, yeah, I, I don't care either way. Um, but that is again more sportsmanlike than saying no, fuck you, you yeah. cheated or trying to find some other reason why to weasel out of it. Yeah, and I think that the the whole like the whole thing around blaming women for their abuse, I don't know how we get past that, but it is maybe it's generational. Yeah. Um, no, it for sure is, and and I think that's why movies like that. No one's gonna watch this movie and feel good. No. no one's going to listen to this podcast and feel good. I don't feel good saying weird shit that I've said. I don't like talking about doctors' fingers and butts. Like, I don't like any of this. But I think this movie, sadly, because it has to do with kids, um, lays more of a light on what you're talking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just more apparent here. Yeah. So, like, you're like, oh, this is clear. This is fucking clear to me. Yeah. This other stuff can become more clear. 
when yeah. a thirty five year old comes out or mm-hmm. or four forty year olds come right like oh I get this <laughs> this one's black and white like there's no you can't fucking argue this yeah. this is fucking gross this is fucking disgusting you're a fucking monster so you can understand more when it's in an office and mm-hmm. the guy's a boss versus his secretary right. or or whatever the Weinstein or the fucking whatevers you can understand it more. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's why it's important to have these conversations I think that's why it's important we do these podcasts although it's not super fun and I think that's why it's important to watch these type of movies although it's not you know watching Happy Gilmore and leaving with a smile it's really not yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's weird it's weird it, yeah. and for me it's not like it is obviously dark but for me it just fe- feels fucking weird relationships fucking humans all this stuff like I said is very that's why it kind of hit me it's like that stuff's already difficult weird and hard for all humans to figure out. Mm-hmm. That's like like part of the secret of life, right? Mm-hmm. Like how to figure out human relationships through this path of whatever we're doing here. And now you're bringing all this weirdness in there and really fucking up people's lives. And, you know, the parents all thought they were doing the right thing. Of course. And they were, like, we can't see because we don't know, we weren't presented with any evidence about this, the extent to which the athletes really, really desperately wanted to, to compete in the sport right. and be in the Olympics, whatever. Seemingly, on the surface, it definitely seemed that way. Yeah. But that's how, the, the amount of practice and all that stuff, some of them love it, some of them don't love it as much. You know, you would just so, think, at least I would, if they didn't love it at all. All athletes like will say they hate their sport, yeah. you know, or like have days they don't go as hard. But uh, to me, if one of them heart wasn't actually in it, they don't get that far. I you know what I mean? You, you just don't get better. Yeah. Like, you could end up in these camps, and you could be talented enough to end up somewhere to be in these situations. Mm-hmm. But, like, they're going probably six hours a day, year-round, for ten years. They're not they're not going hard enough in practice, if they don't like it, to get better. That's so you would think there's some... There has to be something. They're, they have to be driven in some way. Some but, way. But they could also be driven by trying to make other people happy. For sure. I'm not saying it's uh, 100%, yeah, uh, altruistic or, yeah. Or, or, or for the love of the game. Yeah. But it, there's some drive to get them there. Yeah. On, and, on Even at age 12. Yeah. And I think that there's probably a component of parents trying to live vicariously through their kids' success. Sure. There's plenty of that sure. out there in the world. It seems completely likely that that's the case. Well, and 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 like uh, that that whole thing is like hard for me. Obviously, I'm not a parent, but like if I see my kids fucking good at something, it's hard to find what you're good at in this world. That's a fair point, yeah. So like I'm going to make my like I'm going to want my kid to fucking do what he's good at. Yeah. Because I know you're going to you, everyone likes being good at something. No one likes sucking. If you suck at something, it's not your favorite hobby. Yeah. You know? Uh, like, if my kid's fucking built and studly at something, I'm going to want him at least to give it a go. Yeah. Because he has potential. Everyone wants to be special. Uh-huh. And if you are special, I think I'm really fucking special. I was talking about this the other day, too. <laughs> I'm just different. Remember the sociopath test? <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and, like, the one thing I answered all the way is that I'm, like, better than people. Yeah. I just feel like I'm so different than people. Yeah. You know, I have something. The issue is I don't have the talent to go with that something. Yeah. If I had the talent to go with my something, I'm Robin Williams. Uh-huh. I just have the bad Robin Williams and not the talent Robin Williams. You I know just, what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, these kids, if they have their thing, maybe they're living vicarious for sure, but I, you also want what's best for your kid. Yeah. Like a gold medal? Like, that's fucking sick. Yeah, but you also have to like live with being a gold medalist the rest of your life, and you have to have a good judgment of your 100%. kid no, to know whether or not they can handle that. One, and no one knows because yeah. none of us have done it. Yeah, you know, like you and I got we're all real hard in powerlifting. I went real hard in basketball, and I know what I missed out on life or what I didn't learn, mm-hmm. but I also know the benefits I got mm-hmm. from it. Mm-hmm. I listened to a podcast yesterday with the author of this new book on Giannis. Um, I like I didn't know the whole story. Yeah. I didn't know close to the whole story. Um, the issue, though, was that that he was only interested in soccer. His dad was a professional soccer player, yeah. and he that's that's all where all of his skill was. Yeah. Never played basketball until yeah, until much, high school. Yeah, until much later, and it took him a long time yeah. to get really good. As he was practically an adult, yeah. you know. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was like sixteen, seventeen, eighteen when he started really jam, and which it, is so late. And and he didn't really really get good in the NBA until yeah. until after the first year at yeah. least. Yeah, just you know? his size, people were impressed. But um, yeah, yeah, it the, took a while. The author made the point that it the best thing in the world for him was the fact that they sucked the, his rookie year. Yeah, yeah. And so he got to just go out and make a bunch of mistakes. Yeah, and he's and in Milwaukee. Matter. It's a small program. Yeah, yeah they kind of give him the lead. 
What's crazy though, talk about genetics. Like he has like fucking three brothers and eighteen cousins in the NBA now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I think he had one brother win a championship with him, which is fucking unheard of and yeah. sick. One brother plays for Lakers, won a championship, mm-hmm. and then I think now he has a cousin or a brother on the Kings. At least trying out for the Kings. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. He and he, I d- didn't realize he grew two more inches. Yeah. Two more inches yeah. after he was in the NBA. In the NBA. And like thirty pounds. And thirty pounds. Yeah. yeah. He was like lived in the weight room because yeah. he was a flexor, according to this to the author. He yeah. would like bench press and then go flex in the mirror. Yeah. See if he had any gains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's cool. There's a lot of cool stories like that. He seems like a good dude. Who knows what what but um But he he was the one who was driven in that in that regard. For sure. He was trying to pull because his his family had like literally no country. Yeah. Um at that point and it wasn't until the nba was interested in him that like the u.s government got involved yeah. in helping him get document documented himself and then get documentation for his family so they could come to america yeah like yeah it's cool but he was all about trying to pull them out of the situation they were in yeah was is it is he nigerian based from uh, f- greece based from nigeria born in nigeria yeah uh, family moved to Greece, yeah. and then um, uh, as refugees, yeah. and then couldn't get huge anti-immigrant um, uh, s- sentiment in Greece. Yeah, you don't hear that story still in Greece is. a lot. Still, you is. hear Germany, you hear London or England. Yeah. Uh, our buddy Luau, Luau Dang, playing the NBA for a very long time, big career, similar story. Sudan, refugee to, to England, moved yeah. to New Jersey for basketball kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah, not not an un- unheard of story. Greece seems weird though. Maybe I'm uh, uneducated on it, but it doesn't seem like the common move. Uh, yeah, it was it was you know they they lived through a lot of bad shit. Yeah, there. I'm sure a lot of bad shit. Um, now Nigeria is balling. Beat the U.S. in an exhibition game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a lot of guys in the NBA and playing overseas. Uh, uh, one of the dudes might be from Sacramento area, I think too. And then uh, obviously our buddy Jacobs over there coaching a bunch of young cats and. Rwanda. Rwanda at the moment. Yeah. I don't know where the kids are from, though. I feel like they're Sud- Sudanese, uh, South Sudanese, but I, I think, think they're in told, Rwanda for the camp. I think he told me that, yeah. yeah. They, it's kind of from a little bit all over. Maybe now. It's like a big camp. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so back to the documentary. It's sort of told through the um, the view of this... <sighs> Indiana, Indianapolis-based... Uh, In- Indianapolis Star reporters. Yeah. And uh, also... Like three of their investigators kind of lead the... Or, or, or journalists kind of lead the way. Yeah, and and Maggie Nichols, who was a gymnast. Yeah, um, who back in the day. And one more. Well, who, who is Athlete A, not Maggie? Athlete A is Maggie. Oh, then I was thinking of another one. There's two kind of older ones that lead the way. Uh, Dan- 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 Dancher? Jane Dancher. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And... And one one was kind of Olympic level, and one was kind of just not. But they both kind of tell the story. Uh-huh. One was in the camp, and kind of uh-huh. yeah. And and that's kind of what the you know the word George Gibney podcast talks about with swimmers. It's it's typically the top ones, but it's not all the top ones. Yeah. It's you know other ones along the way that these that this guy tried to convince. Oh, you could be better if you know you had this special practice with me and you did this with me and yeah you know yeah or i will favor you if you do which happens in fitness yeah some weird grooming i've heard a lot of stories and people and histories and past like it happens everywhere that is the power weird dynamic mm-hmm. it's just again i think so bright because these they're kids yeah you know the story just hits you flat there's yeah. no and and these the uh, interesting thing to me is just how blown away these reporters are as they start finding out this stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh my god, yeah. this has been going on forever. And five hundred people, they think. Yeah, yeah, five hundred lady athletes. Yeah, it's it's just pure insanity yeah. that it, that it went on for that long. It's weird, and obviously I'm on the outside and I see the dark documentary story. But like, what's weird to me is like, and this might sound wrong too, but like the guy just doesn't look that charismatic. And maybe this is, again, Mike's issue of thinking he's special. Because, <laughs> like, charisma is how some people describe me. Uh-huh. And so, like, when I see that guy, I'm like, how did you fall for this idiot? And not the kids. But, like, the parents say that. Uh-huh. Or, like, the, the other coaches say, like, yeah, he's such a charismatic guy. Everyone loved him. I'm like, this guy doesn't seem very fun. No. You know what I mean? Uh, the kids, the kids, uh, hopefully you guys don't take that wrong. The kids, I'm not saying they fell for anything. 
they no, were because manipulated. They didn't know. Yeah, yeah. They didn't know. No, they were they just, manipulated on every level. Yeah. I'm talking about the the reporters and other people that narrate. You got to watch the movie to see. They narrate saying, "Oh, he's such a charismatic guy. Everybody loved him." And I'm like, "Yeah." Yeah. I and there's another thing that I will lay <laughs> at, at at the feet of of parents, however, though, and 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 schools and there a lot of these kids are are tutored. Yeah. So yeah. they're not actually in Home a normal school. classroom experience, but like Sex ed started, you know, fifth or sixth grade, yeah. if purely around like what the mechanics are, and don't let anybody do X Y Z to you. Yeah, see, you I went know? to a weird school, so I don't know what regular sex ed is. Well, there isn't any standard curriculum yeah, there in should California. Be. I can tell yeah. you that. There's yeah, there no should be like to even talk about it. Yeah, there should be. There should there be should like be. obviously, but there should be like some kind of physiology type deal, yeah. and then there should be some like maybe evolutionary type deal, and then there should be some kind of emotional, social cultural type deal all in that curriculum right if, yeah but if agreed. you're yeah if you're not telling kids how to protect themselves yeah what's good bad normal yeah, yeah what well, uh, really what it comes down to that people think that they can keep them away from it but they can't right like they can't you can't protect your kid every minute of sure. every day yeah and you like, can't trust every human out yeah, there you, there there isn't a helicopter big yeah. enough for you to follow your kid around all yeah. of the time it's just not possible and so if you're not giving them the the, the tools to protect themselves then you know, or or the credit for um, having the where per- personal yeah. wherewithal to protect themselves. Yeah, a little bit of power, a little bit of knowledge is some some power. Yeah. It won't fix it all, but it's definitely yeah. better than none. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. It it, it <sighs> I'd never heard at, at any point that that anyone thought the girls were making stuff up when for they sure. were reporting when they were kids but they did just kept they kept slow walking and reporting it to the to the police or they just didn't report it yeah. at all yeah yeah the, the the one thing was the slight youtube comments saying like dumb shit like but this youtube comments too but like yeah, yeah like is it rape if it feels good or some that was like one comment on well, there well here's the thing if you're underage you can't give consent regardless yeah it does yeah yeah, yeah it's just all mood i mean that's that's how it's just statutory rape yeah. at the very yeah. least yeah. you know no no it's all bad if you're if you're an adult <laughs> if you have reached your majority and you're trying to play with minors they can't consent yeah yeah you know like whatever the age of consent is in your state or country yeah, Under that, it. they can't, yeah. and it's yeah, yeah. like, and this guy, uh, c- so completely failed his Hippocratic oath, which you know starts out first, do no yeah. harm. Yeah, and he's like, no, I'm gonna, yeah, do shit that makes me well feel beyond good. Yeah, well beyond. And yeah, the erection conversation in the that was very very cringy. Yes, just so bad. Yes, and yeah. they. And they asked him specifically about it, and he was, and he he answered the question one way, and then he flipped it around and answered it. And the both other. were wrong, and, and they're gross. both yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he's just easily a, a, a trapped rat at he's that like, point. You wouldn't, and then he said, "But, but of course you would." Yeah, you get like, erections when you're excited, like you fucking sick fuck. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's gross. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'll pro- then, this isn't a movie I'm going to rewatch. That's for damn. No, sure. I don't think I'm going to watch it again yeah. either. But it it. Um, there's a lot of talk of uh, toxic masculinity. Yeah. And I can tell you that when people talk about it, they generally are not talking about guys that look and act like this guy does. Yeah. But I would make the case that that is it's just pure toxic masculinity, yeah. that he thought that his shit was so much more important yeah. than the, the rights and lives of these children yeah. that he just felt licensed to violate them for his own thing and he felt like he kept get, getting away with it and he did because other people facilitated that they covered for him that's where like to wrap it up the beginning of me talking about like seeing human and other people's mistakes and stuff like I don't and maybe this is on me for maybe I'm a piece of shit but like yes this guy probably has mental health issues because he's such a monster in what he did he's not yeah. on the bell curve of normal he's probably some kind of psychopath and I don't have empathy for that yeah you know, I just don't. I can't see the human. I can't see the, oh, yeah, I get it, buddy. It's okay. I don't see any of that. There's, I have none of that. Yeah, there's me. no way to dismiss it. I don't have any empathy for him. Uh, no, I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. I don't have emp- empathy for, for I kind of wish we were in some Roman shit where, like, he did, I think he ended up with two years, 60 year, two 60-year sentences. Something like that. I kind of wish we just, like, chop his dick off. 
like some fucking, you know, like you steal my watch, I cut your wrist off. And I, he does this, you chop his fingers off and his pee pee. Yeah, I got you, but at the same time, it kind of goes back to the sportsmanship thing. No, like, there's some sportsmanship. I'm in not law doing it here. No. Too, oh you know? yeah, I'm not saying they do it on the spot, but maybe that's like an <laughs> option in the courthouse. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 certain that this guy has to be under some high security or. Oh yeah, no, you no, know, in jail. Oh in yeah, jail. I I hope. I, yeah, you guys think I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, I kind of hope. I kind of hope it goes down for him in there. Yeah. I hope he gets what he deserves in the prison. Yeah. Because you hear stories, and then, like, I kind of like that. I kind of like that about prison. <laughs> I don't know if it's real. I don't know. You know what I'm talking either. about. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I, I hear that's a thing, and I kind of like that. It, you, I like it, that thugs stick up for, like, shit. Yeah. Like, I, they're in there because they stole a car and they shot a man. Yeah, w- regardless of what their other morals are. No, I love that. They don't like the idea that's that some, someone would. I think that's some good man energy. <laughs> I'm in jail because I shot a man and stole his car. Not good. Don't condone. But I'm going to jail doing my shit. So-and-so's in jail because he, I'm going to fucking get him. Like, that's not cool. I like that. I was on a case where, there, where um, on a, you know, on the jury of a case where, uh, there was violence against an inmate by another inmate, yeah. and the the inmate who was who was uh, injured in prison because the courthouse has to feel what I feel had murdered a teenage girl. Yeah, and that, yeah, see, chop his fucking dick off. I didn't know until after the trial that that's what we were dealing with, yeah. and I, like we knew kind of the name of the killer. And there was just a little bit that w- might have led you to believe what his crime was, but they're not supposed to tell yeah, you. Yeah, because it's past stuff that can't interfere with the current investigation or right. whatever. Yeah, right. But afterwards, it was like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, like, yeah. And no, I, could, I, yeah, I, I'm still not 100 percent sure that it was an inmate that did it. To, to be honest, oh yeah, maybe it, a cop. Uh, Either way, I don't kinda care. Like I kind of like that street rule shit. It that's could, sportsmanship to me. <laughs> that's that honor integrity shit to me. Protect this house, kind of shit. Yeah, I do like that. I do like that. I, I don't. T- I don't support any violence. I don't support any crime. But if there's some shit going down, that's the shit I do support. I will say this. I understand it. Yeah, that's. A, I don't know. Maybe I it's because I'm Italian it. and we got these Roman things. But you fucking steal a watch. I'm chopping your finger off. But. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I think that when you were talking about about um, about protecting women, some of that is also I don't know. That, this is a this is a mess because on some time some some one hand, on one hand you have people who are guys who are overly protective of of women yeah. all the time, and then the other side you have the men who blame women for everything that happens to not only them but that. Think that they're going to do stuff to them, and or, like, or oh, yeah, that. on yourself. That's like yeah. the incel world. We should get an incel specialist on here. Oh, Involuntary sp- celibate. That's a whole weird world. That'd be that's dark and weird. But they're kind of those guys. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, they, they blame women for not wanting them, but they're the issue. Obviously, I'm going to put this toward the end and, and with the thought that I might actually cut it. But uh, yeah, yeah, hit it. Go. <laughs> we'll close it out. <laughs> the the uh, uh, the show that we started with together. Toward the end of that, toward the one of the last episodes of that show, after you left, the guy that we used to work with um, decided that uh, because there was a, there were some scandals going on at the time, some um, sexual harassment, yeah. sexual abuse kind of scandals going on at the time, with somebody that we knew, and uh, he led off the show with saying that um, women shouldn't dress provocatively because that's why they were abused right, right. and whatever. And I had to turn that one around in the moment and say, no, actually there's nothing that supports that. Yeah, there's yeah. It, that's it's guys being assholes. It's not, yeah. you know, it's not how women dress. Yeah. And these, I mean, obviously these little girls are wearing next to nothing. Yeah. And, but if they're in fucking it's not park <laughs> is in the workroom, this guy's still a monster. Yeah. Yeah. The guy, the monster's the monster. The monster's the monster. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and, that, and and anybody that treats women in that way, like they like yeah. like their own agency doesn't matter because of the way that they're dressed. Like, who does that fall on? Yeah, you're the monster. You're, you're the, the selfish monster. monster. You're yeah, monster. yeah. 100%. All right, I've had enough of this one. It's Athlete A. You can catch it on Netflix. Were we gonna do? What's the name of the next one? That's a good question. 
we're in a just a slot about movies at the moment. We will have other content, but um, this episode was supposed to kind of be last week, and we and then we couldn't get to it right away, and so uh, we're gonna be doing uh, Malice in the Palace, which is about the big brawl with audience in the uh, Indiana Pacers game, probably in the '90s, early 2000s, with Ron Artest. I think it talks about a lot of mental health. We haven't watched it yet, but we'll have Dean back. Excited about that one because it's sports and mental health, which I think this podcast is turning into, and things that both you and I advocate for. Yeah. Um, so if you guys want to watch it beforehand, watch it now. We'll talk about it later. If not, wait for the podcast and watch it. Appreciate you guys so much. 3SB.co, brand new launch is live. Check it out. Hopefully things are still in stock for you. Um, apologize if not. Otherwise, you should probably hop on the mail list or Instagram or something if you want to get more notifications um, so we don't miss out on your size. I'm Silent Mike. Everyone want to follow me and Third Street Barbell on Instagram. I am at the EG McDan on all the social medias. This show is 50% facts where percent is a word and 50 is just numbers. It's just numbers, folks. And you've been with us in good company right here. And we will talk to you next time.